Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of uh, videos looking at kits um, either that I've designed or that I've finished building. Um, today we're looking at a kit I've finally finished uh, building, although there is some uh, design work that went into this as well. Um, you may not be able to tell what it is from this kind of top-down view, but if we turn the local on its side, hopefully everybody can recognise either the engine. Um, so this is a kit that I've had uh, I had the kit for about six and a half years. Um, it was bought as a Christmas present um, just after um, our eldest son was born. Uh, we decided that we would, um, my wife and I would, we would buy each other um, reasonably expensive uh, gifts um, to kind of recognise his first Christmas. Um, but things that we would want to either keep or spend time doing something to do with our, with our hobby that we were hoping to kind of get back to when life kind of returned slightly to normal after uh, as he grew up um so the the present to me was this uh kit for either the engine um so this is a ph designs uh kit um it's the four millimeters to the foot o gauge um version uh they do also do both uh, a seven meter a seven, sorry sorry seven millimeter scale uh, version of the kit um, and um, I think EM and P4 chassis as well in the um, in the four millimeter scale version um, so as I say um, it's taken about six and a half years from uh, being given the kit to completing it partly this was obviously because um, when my eldest child was 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 smaller I didn't have, have time for the hobby but also because the kit uh, has presented a number of of um, of, of problems as we've gone along and it's ended up kind of in and out of um, the um, kind of active pile as I've got annoyed with it for one reason or other um, but it's now finished um, runs reasonably reasonably well um, it's got a little bit of a wobble but I think um, that will will settle partly it's because the body and the chassis aren't currently um, screwed together um, I'll put a video uh, either a link or video up on the screen as we talk um, showing it moving um, and yeah I'm really happy with how it's turned out so if we have a, a quick look um, side on uh, looks really nice you can see there's the there's the little tap for Jones and Steam to make his tea um, we've got the transfers on the front um, I'll come back to that in a minute because it's not quite right um, transfers on the side obviously the lining um, is all it's all nice um, yeah, symbols on the back uh, same on the other side I've got all the uh, the handrails in place the uh, organ pipe whistle um, all the parts and it, it looks it looks good I mean we can compare it to the front of my childhood book uh, which I've been using for kind of uh, prototype information um, and I think we can see that you know it's not a it's not a bad match um, Colours are a bit different in, in, in as I say, the colours change throughout the book and the TV series. I've gone with a, a green that I like. Um, it's actually a better match to some of the pages inside the book than it is the, the front cover. Uh, but it looks, it looks, you know, it looks pretty good size wise. Um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's pretty good. It, it's almost exactly the same size actually as the, as the image on the front of the book. Um, which brings us on to uh, a number of, a number of, kind of issues as it were with the kit and things that we've we've had to um we've had to work through so um yeah I, firstly the kit came um it, it's just the etches and the transfers you have to buy some 3d printed parts separately which is the, the whistles the water filler the chimney uh the buffers and the lamps um, you also need to source uh, motor gearbox wheels. Now it does make some recommendation um, for the for the wheels um, and suggests that you buy a specific set of wheels and then chop out some of the extra extra spokes to make it right. Um, but looking at the suggestions, I wasn't happy that they were particularly accurate to the to the book or the television series, even if you cut out the spokes. So I went ahead and designed a set of wheels. Um, it was actually the first thing I did. So um, you can have a look at here's one of the one of the prints. So what I did was I, I had these printed 
via um, shapeways. They actually came as four um, all joined together and without the very fine uh, flange they were had a, a kind of a conical uh, shape. Um, so I cut them all off, drilled out the middle hole to the right, uh, the right diameter and then turned the, the flange um, using a, a profiling tool on the lathe. Uh, that actually turned out to be more difficult than I expected. Um, it turns out the brass that Shapeways cast these in isn't really ideal for um, turning, so it would get very hot and would kind of clump in the tool. I actually broke the holding fixture um, that I bought for doing this twice, uh, where it kind of mol almost melted to the wheels. Um, but annoyingly, <laughs> having designed these uh, based on the size and the instructions, turned four wheels, um, I found they wouldn't actually fit in the chassis, um, so here's another one that I got a little bit further with. Um, but basically, um, the wheels are too large, so if you, even if you put them almost touching each other, the axles wouldn't go through the holes on the chassis. Um, so um, I ended up making a new set, printing a new set, and turning those, and that's what's on the on the kit. And you can have a see about a bit more about how they work. So. Um, They've got a small um, screw um, fitted in from the back um, <clears throat> that's loctited in place that acts as the, the crank pin. <clears throat> um, one side of the axle wheel is live to the axle. The other side, and this is an example you can just about see, has a little black rim around it. So that's actually an um, insulating bush taken from a set of Hornby um, coach wheels. So when I, tur I turned the axles, I turned one end down to take the insulating bush uh, and then they left the other end so that they would fit in the wheels. Um, <clears throat> and that all works works nicely. The coupling rods are just from the kit and you can see they've been a, a, they've been held in place with with bolt with nuts which are again loctited into place. Um, and that all works really really nicely. Uh, the motor it, well, the gearbox is from high-level kits. Again, I'll put links to the, the bits in the instructions. Um, but you can see, even with these slightly smaller wheels, and I made them quite a bit smaller than the instructions, they're really, really close together. Um, and yeah, the 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 kit instructions are just wrong for the for the size of wheels. They just wouldn't they wouldn't fit. Uh, but anyway, I, I I copied the design from my book. So you've got the the counterweight on the edge of the the wheels, the right number of spokes, almost the the right crank design for the for the centre, um, and that works really really nicely. I'm really happy with that. The tapes just to kind of hold the wires in place to make it easier to get it in and out of the chassis um, and to avoid uh, shorts and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, really happy with that. And um, as I say, it um, all just kind of slides nicely into place. Um, there you go back together. Um, so yeah, so that was my first attempt at um, a, a, a proper working set of wheels um, that I've turned and designed myself. So I can't necessarily, won't necessarily do that again because as I say the brass that Shapeways are using isn't really suited for turning so I'd have to find either some other, somebody else to print them or uh, some other way of, of, of doing that. It may be that I print a center in metal um, and then turn a brass uh, a brass rim or, or a, a steel rim or, or aluminium or whatever uh, well not aluminium but um, a steel tyre essentially for the for the rim might be a, a better bet but anyway that's for future I don't have a, a need for any any more wheels as yet um, so yeah so and then the rest of the kit um, as I say I had a few issues with assembly but mostly me not having the right kind of tools so um, there's a lot of metal here and getting enough heat in in places to get the seams soldered was difficult. I ended up using a, a kitchen blowtorch in the end for some of the parts. Um, it's also the first boiler that I've rolled from a flat sheet. So I bought a set of uh, rolling bars. Again, uh, there'll be a link in the in the description if I can find one um, to allow me to roll that perfectly circularly. Um, and that went really well. As I said, one of the problems I actually had was getting the front smoke box door attached to the boiler because there's quite a lot of metal involved. Um, so yeah, so that was one of the places I used the, the blowtorch. Um, but yeah, there's not much else to, to say about the, the actual um, build. Um, 
However, there are a few issues with scale. Um, so, if you look at it sideways on, it looks about right, certainly against the, the drawing in the book. But if we bring in another green cartoon um, engine, um, you can see that compared with Percy, um, the Ivers huge height wise. Um, now I know these are both cartoons, and I'm not necessarily convinced that Percy's a perfect match to the to the book. I think it's too long, probably just to, to match the chassis that Hornby was using. Um, but you can see there's there's definitely differences in height. Um, certainly the cab height. Um, Ivor looks huge, um, and if we compare, I'll lay that down. It's probably a bit easier. If I compare Ivor to another small, um, kind of slightly industrially uh, loco. So this is the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway uh, Pug. This is one of the older models by Dapple. Uh, it's now made, by, I believe, by Hornby. Um, you can see again, this is this is tiny. Uh, in comparison height wise um, and I think that basically this model is is way out of scale it's supposed to be four millimeters to the foot because it's OO, well, I mean, it's designed for OO gauge I suppose there was nothing that said it was four millimeters to the foot but you'd assume that if you were doing um, if you were doing it for OO you would do it to four millimeters to the foot and you can see how much of a problem that is if we look at this so this is um, Jones the Steam there's a um, website i will again put a link in the description that has a kind of cut out a print and cut out cardboard version of you building either and contains uh photos of both um jones of steam and die the station master now die the station master is taller than jones so i scaled it so that die was six foot and then that makes jones a little bit shorter but still reasonable reasonable size and if you look at him against um the cab of the Pug chassis. You can see that it's a it's a reasonable match. Um, you know he's not he's not kind of dwarfed by the by the loco. Um, but if we look at him against Ivor, um, that's just silly. Um, I mean, if you look at the front of the book, um, <clears throat> the book suggests that he's you know he's just about the height of the cab. Um, well. If you if he's just about the height of the cab, then um, this uh, um, model is about six millimeters to the foot tall. Um, I printed some other some other copies of um, of Jones um, and worked out you know roughly how how tall he would be to fill the gap. So. Um, yeah, he's not in a particularly normal uh, scale. So it also means that I can't necessarily, if I want a figure for Jones in the cab or anything, then I'm not going to be able to find a kind of ready to use four millimeter scale figure um, and modify him because he's going to be too tall, too small. I can't use a seven millimeter scale figure either because that would put his hat um, kind of out of the, the top of the cab. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think what's happened is that the seven millimeter scale version um, has been scaled down because the instructions even show um, some photos with a ruler for the steps um, and show them being much longer than they actually are. So I think I think what they've done is they've taken the seven millimeter artwork, scaled it down, and then had to adjust certain bits of it so that it would still fit like the motor and the chassis and things. And that's ended up with um some odd size choices um i also think it's happened with the transfers as well so the transfers on the side here aren't bad they're a pretty good match so on the book again they fill this panel but if you look at the front of the loco you can see that this this ribbon uh transfer is meant to be pretty much Butt up against the yellowy white lining around the edge of the smoke box door, um, and it doesn't. It's designed for a smaller circle. Um, I didn't notice this until I was actually fitting it, so I should possibly have spaced it slightly further away from the edge to make it symmetrical, but I didn't. Um, so it just looks like it's got a slightly more cheesy grin. Um, 
but I think what's happened is that they've sized this transfer from the 7mm version down to the 4mm of the foot version with the engine actually being sized only a little bit further down. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, the, the, the point is that there are definitely things weirdly out of scale. Um, it does mean that you can't really run, you know, Ivor next to something like Percy with people in the shot and expect them to look reasonable. Um, not that I was intending to do that. If anything, I'll build a small uh, kind of diorama um, for Ivor. I mean, I can run him on normal, normal oh, gets track. Um, but I'll probably build some kind of um, small diorama if I want somewhere scenic uh, to run him and scale that to match um, the loco based on um, based yeah based on the scale of the of the loco. So I've already I already had a go at um, at trying to work out print some of the screen kind of screenshots um, from the TV series uh, to see if I could get them to look right against him. Um, and again, yeah, they they scale um, out at a at an odd at an odd scale. Um, but all things said, there's no way I could have built this um, myself. I don't think yet um, by hand. Um, the only way I was going to get this was by um, by building the kit. I've had six years on and off of fun. Um, frustration as well but fun um the, the getting the wheels right and getting them the right size and doing them twice and everything else was 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 a lot of was a lot of frustration um and a lot of cost uh i mean as i say i've done two sets of printed wheels which weren't cheap um i've broken two wheel holding fixtures for the lathe again not cheap um i bought the rolling bars to build the boiler um definitely not cheap um and then the kit so um all told i've probably spent i don't know maybe 400 pounds maybe it's difficult to know for certain are on this obviously the tools are still useful well the ones i haven't broken the rolling bars um are still useful for for other kits um but yeah it, it's it's been a lot of fun um and i yeah i'm over the moon with how this has turned out um when you see it in front of you with the with the transfers on on the lining, it really does look does look special. Um, I've put some real Welsh coal in the bunker. I possibly need a little bit more, uh, but some real Welsh coal. I don't know if it's from the top left corner or not, but there we go. Um, and yeah, uh, just just really really super happy uh, with how it's turned out. Um, I'm yet to show it to my eldest son. Um, now it's finished. He's seen it kind of coming along as he's as he's got older. Uh, but I haven't shown him it yet, so I'll have to, I'll have to do that. Um, but um, yeah, I'm I'm super happy. Um, so that's another kit, another thing finished off the off the pile. Um, so it may be that I have to start thinking about what's next, uh, and what I'm gonna what I'm gonna build next. But for now, that's Ivor. Uh, yeah, um, hope you've enjoyed the the journey. As I say, there's a few other videos. Um, up on, up on YouTube and I, I can link to my blog in the description as well where there's a, a bit more of a description of some of the some of the random steps that have been taken to, to get this far. Uh, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed that.